Hello and welcome to a new episode of today's Youth. And uh, today we're delighted to be joined here at the studio by uh, Mario Ahmed. He's a graduate of petroleum engineering and he was one of the main organizers at COP27 uh, conference of climate change uh, that was taking place in uh, Sharm el Sheikh uh, here in Egypt. Uh, he's going to be telling us uh, more about the role of youth in the success of COP27 or conference of uh, climate change, conference of parties that was held at the Red Sea Resort City of Sharm el Sheikh. Thank you very much for joining us, Mario. You're welcome. Uh, Mario, to start with, I would like you uh, to highlight the role of youth uh, in the success of uh, COP27. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for this nice opportunity to talk. Our pleasure. Uh, about uh, the COP27. It was really a dream. I was feeling that I was living a dream. Um, the president of the Fatah Sisi insisted to make it by youth and for youth, yes. he said this. That's why uh, we were uh, doing our best to prove that we deserve this confidence, to, 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 to deserve this trust, kind of trust. Um, the youth were organizing everything, really, uh, everything from the needle to the rocket, like what we say. Yes. So uh, transportation, uh, accommodations, hotels, the halls themselves, the content, the program organization for everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So it was like we're doing different rules. We, div we didn't even differentiate between people who is doing this more than this, more important than this. And for me, uh, I was working in the flights. Uh, I was responsible. For, uh, I always say team member, even if I like to say even the team leader is a team member to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I was a team me member in the flights. I was responsible for changing the flights for them and managing this and the surprising changes because they are coming to a, a new country for them. Maybe this is the first time they come and they want to see that everything is easy to come. This is a kind of encouraging tourism, by the way. Mm -hmm. And also, I was responsible for the, some of the hotels, member for the hotels, for uh, like uh, maybe some changes, some complaints, uh, some small complaints, anything. So uh, I was managing these two parts. Uh, I could see also that the youth were moving in everything in the halls and taking care of everything. Even the permissions for the people coming to make sure that everything is well secured, security, and uh, we, the people, the youth that were chosen for this conference really proved that they can do the uh, mission 100% and we achieved the dream. Right. Uh, well, uh, Mario, tell me, how did you apply as a candidate, uh, as one of the organizers? How were you selected? The selection process. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm always doing activities and I'm near the decision makers. Okay. This is how the youth have to work. It has to be near the decision makers, near the people who are choosing, because once uh, for me to put myself in the shoes of the person who is a decision maker. So mm -hmm. I will choose the person who I see active, good reputation, uh, very uh, intelligent. That's why we uh, we're choosing. I didn't even apply for something like this, I, and even didn't even do in a step for it. I was just choosing to go for it, mm -hmm. uh, being active. I have published researches in uh, Egypt here, in Yom Saba, Al Bawab, Al Dustur, Al Akbar, Haram, and the International Journal of Academic and Applied Research of Washington, USA. And I'm active in my work. That's why when you get to choosing, you get to choosing for a, a purpose that is su suitable for your kind of work and your activities. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about, about your activities that you just mentioned, the writing articles and the uh, I, I mean, you're, you're active. I mean, you're, you're doing a lot, not just your work. Tell me more about your activities. My activities uh, went through many things. To tell you about it, I have a German language, so I can translate German articles. Uh, I can uh, deal with uh, research projects. Uh, I'm always interested in new technologies. I have made an innovative design was published. So this is the, the side things, music and uh, other things. But for me, I am very interested in the practical work that has a vision. Mm -hmm. For example, I dream one day to be a company owner. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in how the companies are established and how they work. Also the sales, I have experience in sales. I mm -hmm. had some project like this before. 
that's why I'm interested in the project, the side the project that makes you a businessman one day, because we are all muscles for the same body, mm -hmm. Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's why we should do our best to serve our country. And everything is really affecting. Mm -hmm. Once we focus on something and do it, we are transferred to a higher stage. Right. Uh, to know more about you, Mario, uh, on the personal level, uh, you uh, studied petroleum engineering and then uh, you pursued your master's degree, you completed your master's degree, and then you're now working on your PhD. Tell me more about your education and uh, uh, your uh, major field of study. Why did you choose petroleum engineering in specific? Uh, first of all, I, in second school, I, in the second year, I got 99%. Okay? And I could apply for, like, uh, get uh, the science part to be a doctor or something. But I didn't prefer that, to be a physician. But I didn't prefer that. Uh, I preferred to work in engineering and to apply to have engineering in the mathematical department. And in this third year, the two years, uh, cumulative, it was 99.9%. I was the first in many a governor because I chose that right trajectory. I didn't mm -hmm. even hear to people that told me engineering is taken uh, to 92% uh, only and you have 99. No, I didn't even focus on this. And I went for the faculty of petroleum engineering, it was taken 99.14%. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I uh, was chosen uh, to <laughs> go for uh, petroleum engineering for my desire. I like petroleum mm -hmm. engineering, I like drink. I'm interested you followed in your passion. Yeah. That's it. You didn't want to, uh, to study medicine uh, and uh, you decided to follow your passion though you got 99.9% .9 yeah. and you were the first of your uh, uh, high school degree. Yeah. Right. right, we're going to go to a short break and we'll be right back to continue our discussion on the presidential leadership program and its impact and importance to the youth here in Egypt. about your postgraduate studies? Uh, I started my master's degree um, in uh, 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 2010. And uh, I, um, sorry, it was 2019, I'm sorry. 2019. Uh, it was finished in 2019. So uh, I uh, chose to move forward for the postgraduate studies because I'm interested in the research. Mm -hmm. So the research is very important for me and to, uh, having something is, which is mine in petroleum engineering is a great pride. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not just trying to be a studier of petroleum engineering student and uh, to be a graduate, to be an engineer. No, I'd like to have something from this specialism to be mine. Mm -hmm. That's why I chose to move this. And the, for the shale gas, I made an innovative design on shale gas, which was published internationally and nationally. And for the PhD, I'm working now in nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. Nanoparticles, nanotechnology is very important mm -hmm. all over the world, and I'm making some innovative design, another innovative design. Mm -hmm. Right, and you're working also, Mayu? Yeah, I'm working as a drilling engineer, uh, drilling supervisor, and I would like to take this opportunity to talk uh, about uh, my work as a, <laughs> because we've taken everything. Go ahead. Into, okay. Uh, I'm responsible for a dr drilling rig, and uh, my specialism is to work on a drilling rig and to uh, manage everything, like the technical, uh, the uh, um, non-technical thing, the paperwork, and everything like uh, to be outcome for some image to the management. Mm -hmm. Everything happening in the site is under my control to be an outcome for the management. And with the decision of the management, I'm applying them. Mm -hmm. The decision of the man and the eyes and the arms of the management in the site, the drilling rig, mm -hmm. in the onshore and offshore. Yes. Uh, Mayu, you, uh, you told me that you're planning to be a company manager. 
Tell me more about uh, your project. Uh, how are you planning to achieve this? You are uh, will, willing or uh, planning to be in the as an entrepreneur to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, uh, I have something, some designs. I started to work for me when I'm sitting on my work. I find something lacking in this industry. Why didn't people think of this? I start to make an innovative design for it. I apply it to be a patent. Then one day when it is a patent, it's mine, it's my company. And mm -hmm. now I will be serving my country, serving the industry I worked for through this. Mm -hmm. That's why it goes in my mind. That's why how it goes in my mind and how I move in this way to be a company manager in my specialism, to know how can I serve the work? How can I make the work faster, safer, and in order to make it in the best shape, the best outcome. Right. Uh, definitely, Mayu, you faced a lot of obstacles throughout your education years, throughout your work years. Uh, how did you overcome obstacles and uh, how did you achieve your goals through persistence and perseverance? Once I graduated, I didn't find an opportunity to work in my specialism. I, uh, I started the master's degree. All the people were mocking of me. You know, I was 99.9, uh, I was the first Romania governorate, and I was uh, very good with honors degree in Faculty of Potsdam Mining Engineering, and I didn't have an opportunity. All the people would say, and you also go for a master's degree for it? No, it's not about this. I'm insisting you to be inside the specialist, to learn more, to have opportunity. Even if I was, it was a bad time, that at this time, like uh, it was not good for work because the oil price was down and a lot of people didn't find opportunities. It was during the pandemic time. Mm, no, but before it, it was uh, 2014 and 2015. It mm -hmm. was a very hard time to find jobs and I insisted. I moved through this. I, I insisted to move forward. I started my master's degree in 2015 and then I finished it in 2019. I took more than the time it needs because I was doing something very important and very innovative. Uh, that's why I insisted to have in my work, this is the biggest obstacle I have ever faced in my life. Mm -hmm. Right, um, you definitely uh, followed all the youth conferences that, that were taking place uh, here in Egypt. As you mentioned to me uh, before uh, we started, uh, you uh, saw how important is gathering youth from different parts of the world in one place like the International Youth Forum to exchange their uh, opinion, their views, their experiences. How significant is this to the youth in your opinion? Uh, I'd like to start by saying that there was a very big gap between the generations. One day, the people thought that the, uh, the youth are playing on computers or something, doing something not important. There was a very big gap. But the smartest mind, the most intelligent mind of the President Abdel Fattah Sisi, he thought that these people should be enabled. Enable. This is an instruction. Once these people are enabled, they can do very important and very big things that can be very wonderful to the whole world. Mm -hmm. That's why we took this opportunity and a lot of conference, uh, the World Youth Forum and mm -hmm. uh, the COP27 and the industry conferences and the uh, environment, all the conferences that are happening are chosen that the youth are taking the opportunity. So gathering youth from all over the world is a smart idea also, by the way, because these people are the future, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I'm one day responsible for some place, I don't even which country, what are the people in other countries do, what, what. But when I have colleagues that are also leaders and they were my friends in the conference one day, so it's something like we are making it a one village. Mm -hmm. The world will make it one village. Yes. Right. Uh, definitely, as you mentioned, the, the Egyptian leadership and President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi is giving great attention to the youth. Uh, a lot has been done to the youth during the past uh, seven years. We've seen the uh, presidential leadership program. We've seen the youth conferences taking place. Uh, how do you see the significance of this to the youth and what's the impact of it on them? Yeah, um, giving the youth the hope that he one day can be a leader is really something, a big dream. We could not even imagine it. 
You know, Egypt passed through many bad stages in, in, the, in the era of Egypt. Yes, definitely. We were occupied. We were uh, suffering in many stages. Yes. So we came in some stages also that we cannot have a hope for the future. But once you, you know your hope and you know your trajectory when you are a young person, this is very spectacular thing. Like uh, you plan for it. You put, you enable yourself. You take your courses. You are not only depending on the govern, uh, government that they will enable you, they will help you. They are doing this, by the way. And mm -hmm. the president of the Tassis are making a lot of a smart program. One of them are the presidential leadership program. Uh, and I'm a member of the presidential leadership program. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm enrolled in it. So, uh, yeah, a lot of things are done. But when I am a young person and I know my future, mm -hmm. I'm not even only depending on this. You gave me uh, a trajectory, so I'm also qualifying myself. I'm adding to myself. I'm helping you to help me to help the home. Egypt. Yes, sure. Uh, we're going to go to a short break and we'll be right back to talk more about the presidential leadership program and its role to the youth here in Egypt. Welcome back and uh, back to you, Mario. You, you were, we were talking about the presidential leadership program and uh, since you're one of the members of this program, tell me more about its significance to the youth here in Egypt. Uh, this program is, is qualifying the people for getting the leaders for the future. Okay, It's opening the way and giving you the trajectory, the opportunity and um, making you dream. This is what all the youth all over the world are missing in their countries. Mm -hmm. Egypt is the first country, one of the first ones that are doing this, really, that you give you the hope from your being young person. I'm 31 years old mm -hmm. and I'm dreaming and I'm qualifying myself and I'm doing something for the future. So this is from the President Abdel Fattah Sisi was really uh, giving big hope for youth. Mm -hmm. When you, you feel this country is yours, the defect in the past was that the people didn't feel this country are there, so they, they just take care, take advantage for themselves on something. This was in the past, mm -hmm. but we are now in the era, a good era, new era. Uh, President Fatah Sisi is making you feel this is your country. Do it what you. I felt when I was in COP 27 and also in the presidential program. It's my country. It's my mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Everything I do, good, it's affected. Bad, I try to. Uh, modify it, to change it, to learn, to mm -hmm. move, and to take a consultancy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are taking advice, moving in. So uh, I have opportunity to dream. And for mm -hmm. me, I dream, I have a lot of dreams, uh, but one, being a company owner is one of them. Mm -hmm. Right, Mario, since you were one of the organizers at COP27 and uh, you had the chance to attend some of the sessions, and in light of your studies of uh, petroleum engineering and renewable energy, how do you see the significance of uh, focusing on renewable energy uh, in light of the climate change action? I am not going to talk about the technical part a lot because the technical part is not the, the, the interest of a lot of people. I will talk about the policies, how the policies can be applied. For example, your factory owner, uh, some factory owner and the environment, uh, environmental people would like to change uh, what the way or if you, you have get, get, getting a smokes out of your factory and you, you need to apply filters or something. So you need to pay money. How I impose this on you and you accept it. How I get the advantage of a fund the program to support you to do this and you get advantage and I get advantage and we keep the environment clean. This is how the policies are done. 
how the environments all over the environmental uh, organizations and the non-environmental all the organizations all over the world were attending mm -hmm. the UN the uh, ILO uh, the uh, uh, American uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, American embassies uh, uh, the presidents these people are coming mm -hmm. to see how they can make it uniform all over the world to make it easier for achievement because mm -hmm. You need to save the earth. In Egypt here we say, we say it, the winter was longer than this in the past. We only have a few months for the winter. So yeah. we feel the climate change and it's near. But the normal people don't focus on it. No, you need to focus. You need to encourage. You need to move forward. And the researchers are really encouraged in this stage mm -hmm. of the issue. Right. Uh, Mario, we all uh, saw uh, or witnessed the success of COP27 uh, through uh, TV screens and uh, newspapers and uh, our coverage here. Of course, uh, you as one of the attendees, uh, tell me uh, how was the success, how uh, describe to me the vibes over there? I cannot, you need to, to, to come to see it, you need to come to see it. It was really a very nice thing um, to see the designs, to see the sessions, the people coming to give the sessions, the, to instruct the sessions, the organizers, uh, everything moving in a right direction. Really, like there is no any uh, defect, nobody is complaining. And even the transportations in the, in, the, in the street, the buses, the green bus were for free. Every 10 minutes you have one. Mm -hmm. we, we, the streets themselves were very clean and nice. It was uh, a dream and achieved, and we hope that the success of the dream are like um, encouraging the climate uh, support here in Egypt, encouraging the tourism, encouraging mm -hmm. the economy giving the reputation to the world that they always know about Egypt, that Egypt is stable and we are always stable mm -hmm. and we can do it by our youth and by the, under the supervision of the President Abdel Fattah Sisi and management. Right, uh, may a final word from you to the youth on persistence and perseverance to reach your goals? I will say it always the power of one. You need to make at least one thing. If you are talking about your dream, don't talk about it. Just do one thing. Even this thing is, you can see it's small or not or negligible. Like you need to move. You need to start. You need to do. You need to follow up. That's it. And whatever you, you face, whatever you hear from people, don't focus. Okay? You need to adhere to the rules. You adhere to the laws. Away of that, forget it. Mm -hmm. Never focus about it because you need to do it. Life is short. You need to do your your dreams. Take a and step Egypt, forward. Yeah, Egypt needs you. Yes, right. Well, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Mario Ahmed, the uh, graduate of uh, petroleum engineering, and uh, actually a very uh, success uh, story. You're one of the success stories, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to thank you and wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Dear viewers, that brings us to the end of this edition of today's Youth. Many thanks for watching and don't forget to join us next week, same time. Till then, it's goodbye.